everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks and Twinmotion video. Now today we're going to be looking at some site modelling examples and the site modelling in Vectorworks is truly amazing if you've not seen it before. And we're also going to be looking at how we take that site model into Twinmotion. Now the example is a really interesting project I'm collaborating on with Ash Design for some sort of forest room cabins within a sort of natural environment. It's a lovely project and I really do hope you enjoy the tutorial. Thanks for watching and if you're new around here please like and subscribe it really helps the channel grow and we're doing quite well this year so far so I look forward to you joining up and see you soon enjoy the video so here we have a Vectorworks model of the site now you're going to notice that what I've got here is a load of three-dimensional contours now these can be generated by the surveyor or you can actually generate them yourself, but it does take a bit of time. So you have to set them as 3D polygons, and then basically you can put in the correct Z height. Actually on this particular project, it did take a bit of time. I had the 2D contours, I converted them to 3D polygons, and then I placed them all at the correct height. So when you're ready, you can go ahead to the uh, site modeling and basically create the site model. Here we are in the site model settings, and you'll notice I'm just going to enable some of these options um, show skirt, 3D contours and also mesh smoothing. And honestly, how amazing is that? This is how fast it is to generate the three-dimensional site model once you get into Vectorworks, once you got the information itself. Now generating the uh, contours, as I say, is the uh, more sort of time-consuming element here. Once you've actually got the model, it comes in really well. And basically here we can go and expand the minimum depth just to give it a bit of a base. And you'll notice that removed that sort of grey bit in the low point of the model there. So that's a nice thing to do. So we're ready to kind of start work on our project already. And you can see one nice thing, when I go to top plan, I actually have the project with all the contours. So if I go to my original survey, you can see what I kind of started with in terms of data. So also in my file, I've actually got a site plan there with some sort of nice sort of graphical colored shapes, which has been drawn up with these proper elements. So what I'm gonna do is just go and copy some of these critical elements um, into my site model layer. So I'm just going around and selecting those, Command C for copy. Let's just get that area there as well. Um, and basically I'll go back to my site model and of course paste in place. So now I can begin to start working on my site model by basically creating these shapes into something called a site modifier. So when we right click, we can create objects and shapes. And basically I'm gonna go for a site modifier, I'm gonna delete the source polys, and with the first one that I'm gonna choose here is a texture bed. Okay, so the good thing about the texture bed, it will enable me to show a different material or texture on the surface of the site model where this polygon currently sits. Very important that when you create a texture bed, you must create a class and attach some graphics through the class. So basically I'm gonna go and search for some vegetation or some grass uh, for this particular class site hyphen texture grass. And uh, let's kind of see how that works. Now you notice here in my uh, object info, this is a site modifier. So just make sure that object we drew is in that correct site class now. So I'll just move that into the class required, just to see where it is, there it is. So once we've got the site modifier, all we need to do is update and make sure we're looking at the proposed site model for proposed 2D and proposed 3D. Now there's not really any changes to the 2D surface because we're not sculpting the site, but we are essentially painting it using these uh, texture beds or site modifiers so we can get some different sort of textures on that surface. So essentially this is a process that I'm going to repeat a number of times uh, for all the different elements, things like the uh, grass, the water, and the various pads as well. You'll notice that I've got a few different grasses, and these are from my uh, wonderful texture packs that I sell on the store if you're interested, so do check those out. Um, they come with 120 textures each, and there's three of them, and they're really high quality materials. So as you can see, I've made a bit more progress now. I've managed to create further texture beds for all of the main site features. Essentially what that has done is now painted the surface of my site model. Now you can see I'm moving on to the next stage now where I've actually referenced in these forest room cabins. 
Okay, so I'll show you how this has been done in a second, but I just want to draw your attention to a really useful command called send to surface. And what that will do is basically take the uh, viewport and send it to the surface of the site model. Okay, so you can see here I'm editing the reference and basically this was referenced from this particular file. Okay, so these, these cabins are modeled up in standalone Vectorworks files for obvious reasons. And this means you get a nice clean file without all the site information in. Um, you can see we've got a two bed and there's a three bed version of it as well. Uh, they're really cool uh, designs. Uh, Ash has done a fantastic job on the design and they've been definitely fun to model in Vectorworks. Okay, so there's still probably a bit more work to do on the site, but at this stage I do want to go off and export it off to Twin Motion so that I can visualize my project. Now you notice I'm using the uh, Cinema 4D export for this process, and I've actually also just turned off the cabin so that I'm just exporting the site model. So let's go ahead and make a folder to export these two. And let's just put these into a twin motion folder. Now, a good idea when you do the Cinema 4D export is to isolate the individual layers. And let's just turn the cabins on now. Okay, and let's export those uh, separately. And the reason I do this is because it's more likely that one thing will change. And then you only need to really update, say, the site. You don't need to update the entire um, kind of refresh, the entire export. Or if the cabins change, you can just update those. So you can up update and sort of split the model up as much as you like, and it does make the updating process a little bit easier. I also like it in Twin Motion, uh, the fact that you can actually just turn off the individual layers very easily, the individual imports. So you can see we're going to go ahead and just update our Twin Motion to the latest version, and here we go, we're about to import it. Now, as I said, I'm not using the direct link for this stage, I'm going for the uh, Cinema 4D export import. And here we can keep the hierarchy, that's very important, so that we have access to all of the individual elements. Uh, I could also go collapse by material, perhaps just for the site. Let's give that a whirl and see how that works, because I won't be turning the site information on or off. Now, when the model comes in, it nearly always sort of floats away uh, in the middle of nowhere. So just click F to fit or find the model. Now you can see here it is the model, coming in rather nicely. And basically, if I go and import the uh, buildings, this time I will keep hierarchy because I'm more likely to be editing those individual uh, materials and walls and things. And basically, you'll see that those buildings were gonna land in the right place. And that's because, of course, in Vectorworks, they're all exported in the correct geolocation. So these are gonna take a bit longer because uh, there's, I think, six cabins with a lot more detail in the model. Uh, but it doesn't take too long, and you can see as soon as we kind of click import and succeed, there it is. So the model has come in um, with the terrain and the forest room cabins, and we've got this kind of basic surface in here. Now you can see the uh, two layers that we've exported, and it's very easy if I do want to, to kind of, kind of turn one of those on and off at the same time when I'm working perhaps. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down to transform, what I'm actually going to do is just put a minus number in to drop both of these down so that they're pretty much convenient to the flat site. They're actually 85 meters above datum, but I really want them just a bit lower down. So that's a good little tip. If you just bring them down by whatever the kind of datum is, then they'll sit on the uh, twin motion sort of ground or starting ground. Okay, so as ever, always want to go and change that twin motion background. Um, I don't think I've ever used the default one. And I'm gonna basically drag some grass onto my site model and onto the background. And suddenly it looks a lot sort of better already in that the context kind of fits nicely with what we're doing. Now, one of the tools um, I love in Twin Motion is the vegetation paint tool. And you don't always get the best opportunity to use it, but certainly this project is absolutely one of those in that I can drag down all the different sort of trees that we might be finding in this particular site and basically select them all, get my brush, and then we just need to adjust our brush diameter and off we go, we kind of start painting the site with these beautiful twin motion trees. Now you can see it's absolutely effortless and my Mac is flying here. It has no problem with, you know, even very large sort of forests and things like this. Um, so, you know, this is a perfect project, Forest Rooms says it all really. Um, so a really nice opportunity to play with the vegetation paint tool. 
and basically I'll be adjusting the brush size in a minute for these sort of smaller areas but let's kind of just work away at the kind of boundaries of the site as it were uh, it's definitely so rapid and super good fun now if you do make a mistake don't worry you can always rub out bits as well now let's get this brush size down uh, we'll go for like 12 meters and then we can kind of work in uh, a bit more sort of detail to these kind of areas a bit closer to the building being a bit more careful now this is really all just what I call background random position and random selection of plants we will be placing a few trees individually at some point as well uh, to get a bit kind of more critical placement in relation to the buildings but you know what a great tool is so fast for creating almost instant forest as you can see uh, we're just kind of working that in a bit more with a sort of different brush size so you can always as I say you can always rub out if you make a few mistakes now one of the really really nice things um, with the painter vegetation tool is after you you know painted it essentially you can edit it so we'll be able to edit the things like the density and you can just turn it on and off anytime so the entire object acts as one thing so if you select a particular tree you can slide up the density slider um, so that you get more of those trees you know a denser sort of uh, spread of those trees and you can see it's super easy and very very rapid so it's already looking um, very very different to when we first started and I think you'll agree you know the vector site model um, now looks a lot more realistic and a lot more interesting so let's kind of move on to the next stage so here we are down at the other end of the site you can see I've been busy doing a little bit more work using the vegetation paint tool to also paint in some grass now I would recommend you do these as separate objects and basically we're ready to create our first view so when we create our first view um, you can easily kind of set the quality level and what I really like about Twinmotion is the fact that you can basically now start to kind of work up that specific view in a bit more detail. Um, so I'm just kind of dragging in some of the wonderful rocks from the library. Uh, you can see you've got some amazing plants and bushes as well. So, you know, there's no point in trying to work up a whole project like this. Um, what you really want to do, choose the views or get, you know, get close to the views you're looking for. And then refine those views with a bit more detail in the foreground for example so yeah definitely a good tip don't sort of work up the entire model until you've chosen which views otherwise you're just going to waste a lot of time doing views uh, and areas of the model that you probably wouldn't notice so that's the beauty where i think with twin motion it's a bit like being a film director in a way um, you can kind of set your camera positions and then you can work on the model as required okay so we're just going to navigate around don't forget, with Twinmotion, navigation is one of those things that you've got to master in order to be able to enjoy using the software. So the WASDA keys um, are the keys here that you want to learn, the gaming keys, and the speed as well. Remember that you can control the speed with one to four. One is the slowest and four is very fast. So here's another nice view. Um, we're going to basically work up this view here. I've just clicked create image. And now what I can do is delete those people that came across from the Vectorworks model and of course add some amazing twin motion animated people. Now I really love these, these are great, you know you can just drag them on, they'll snap to whatever surface so we can pop those uh, people by the hot tub there and you'll notice of course they're moving, I'm sure you've seen this before and you can change things like the pose of those people, the clothing they wear very easily make sure also you replace the glass um, the glass in vetworks is very basic but the twin motion glass has nice reflections refraction and just a nicer sort of level of quality and you can easily play with the things like opacity and reflectivity as well so just replacing the glass on the balustrade there and those windows that's looking a lot better already you can see um, I'm just about to kind of rub out a bit of this grass that I was a bit over ambitious with and it sort of went into the water um, you can see for this particular tutorial there's still plenty of work to do but we're making kind of rapid progress so don't be afraid use that brush to basically enhance and rub out bits of that model as required as well okay so I'm just framing up another view uh, that's a particularly nice view let's kind of spin around and get a view sort of looking across this sort of valley towards that cabin there um, and uh, it, you know navigating around is just one of the absolute sort of dreams with twin motion as I say once you crack it now I'm not too worried about the final position of these buildings they're not finalized yet 
This is really early stage design, uh, just to give me a bit of an impression. So once again, let's delete this 2D image prop from Vectorworks, go back to our characters library, and we'll drag in a few more animated people up onto the deck there, kind of overlooking that valley to that lovely lake. So I think one of the things I love most about Twin Motion, as I've said before, is this ability to be a bit like a photographer or kind of film director perhaps, and basically just kind of set these views up, keep working and enhancing them, and just keep tweaking the view. And if you feel like it needs uh, either an adjustment of materials or an extra person added or something like that, you can just do it on the fly. So we're just gonna kind of adjust the view again, and basically let us delete these um, poly people, if you like, or image props from Vectorworks, and just keep adding a few more characters. Uh, also, we can add groups of characters. Now, these are ready-made sort of groups of twin motion people, which are interacting, and they look good. They sort of already, um, you know, add quite a bit more life to the project as well. So you can see how easy it is to navigate around, and those trees are looking really fantastic as well. Just make sure you vary the speed as you navigate. We get a few more people into the scene, perhaps down here. And you see what is good is a snap to the surface of the site model, or for example, that deck up there as well. So we will be making some changes, um, but the beauty is I'll be able to just re-export my model and just update. So if I want to, I can just basically select that painted material for the grass. You can see it immediately kind of highlights, and then I can just kind of carry on working up this image uh, really easily using um, my kind of brush as well. And again, once again, because this is a quite a nice view, I'm just dragging in a bit more interest into that foreground with a few of these lovely twin motion plants and bushes. Now don't forget, if you select multiple items in the library and click, every time you click, you're gonna get a randomly placed plant and size. So let's go ahead and create another image. Now let's review these images. Okay, just review these images. If you do need to, you can just tweak the view and basically refine them and then just click on the refresh button. So we're ready to go for it now. We're gonna just export these initial images. I've selected them and click start export. Let's go ahead and just make a new folder for those renderings just on my uh, sort of twin motion folder here. Just kind of create a renders folder. It's always good to keep tidy, otherwise you end up with lots of things floating around in that particular folder. And you'll see uh, one of the amazing things with Twin Motion is the speed. So basically, those images will be rendered out in uh, 8.3 seconds, as it says in my statistics panel. So if we do want to now, we can just pop over and review those in preview. Uh, these are PNGs. Uh, these are actually 4K images, and that's what I normally render at. They look good. So they're very, very early stage. As I say, they're very rough and ready at this stage. But what I can do is email these over to my client, Ash, just for some initial feedback before we kind of develop this project further. And hopefully we will produce some absolutely lovely, amazing visuals to help market this fantastic, exciting project. As ever, thanks for watching, and please hit that like and subscribe button. See you next time. Bye-bye.